Did you know that one in five Bentaygas sold is actually a hybrid? Indeed, that's the latest information that Bentley has shared. Even more intriguingly is that the Bentayga lineup actually accounts for 40% of sales from the Bentley vehicles and therefore makes it the most popular and indeed successful luxury SUV on the market. Now we're just reviewing and seeing if it's actually worth its price tag because unsurprisingly it comes in at an eye-watering £155,000 but that's without additional options and such as the model that we have on review it comes in at a whopping £190,000. Now if you'd like some detailed breakdown between the different level trims and of course the options that you can attain do check out our detailed written review it'll be down in the description below. Now to kick off this review we do have to talk about its exterior design and I do appreciate it's quite subjective so I'll be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below as to if you think the Bentayga is stylish or not. But nevertheless, I do think that Bentley have addressed the frontal profile of the vehicle via the facelift model that we have on review. Indeed, it just seems to blend and seems to be a bit more cohesion at the frontal profile of the vehicle thanks to the inclusion of more stylish headlines and a larger fronter grille. Now, around the side profile, you do have body colored wheel arches and side skirts as one might expect in a premium SUV. And then you've got 21 or 22 inch alloys such as the ones pictured that come as standard. As for the rear profile, I do think the taillights are a little bit slender for the overall size of the car. I would have potentially expected a slightly larger taillight design, but thankfully there are outward firing exhaust pipes, which are somewhat a rarity of modern vehicles, specifically plug-in hybrids. So it's nice to see that Bentley has retained this in terms of his exterior look. Now I should also point out that the model that we have on review has the dragon red color with the black line finish trim as well. Of course, if you don't like this, you can customize it to pretty much your heart's content where there's a plethora of different colors to choose from via the configurator or via your Bentley dealer. Now, similarly, when it comes to its interior, it can be customized to your own liking. Now, the model that we have has got a Cumbrian green finish and it's finished with a cream Portland leather. Of course, you can customize this to your own liking if you don't like the color and or the design of the dashboard for example. Now what doesn't change however is the infotainment system and the technology that comes integrated. You've got a 10.9 inch display which sits at the front and indeed is definitely a better inclusion over the previous Bentleys of late. However, I will say that the overall infotainment system is a little bit laggy and is actually very reminiscent to some of Audi systems. There's a lot of similarities here with the Audi MMI system and it's almost no surprise that Bentley became under Audi ownership in early 2022. So you can see where the similarities lay over here. Nevertheless, you do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which are supported in a wired format. And if you do run on Apple CarPlay instead, here you can run on a wireless format as well, which is nice to see. See. Now when it comes to connectivity you do have two USB Type-C ports found towards the center armrest and you've got a 12 volt socket should you want to plug in let's say a dash cam and if you want a roundup of some of our favorites it'll be down in the description below and then elsewhere you do have a wireless phone charger found towards the front of the center console. Now continuing on the subject of technology the instrument cluster is fully digitalized and yet again it's very much similar to the one that's used in Audi vehicles. Now this is actually quite a good thing because here the instrument cluster is very vivid provides all the amount of information that you need and can be tailored and customized to a certain degree although not to the nth degree like Audi systems. Now at the front at least in our vehicle we've got a head-up display that's fitted it further bolsters the overall security while you're driving out and about and therefore means that you don't have to glance down at the instrument cluster to check your speed or let's say the safety systems which are in operation. Now before moving on from the use of technology I should also reference the audio system and indeed there is an audio review for the Bentayga hybrid. It'll be up on your pop banner down in the description below or indeed in the pinned comments. Now here as standard you got a 12 speaker 580 watt system and in the name audio system that we have on review you've got 20 speakers that have 1720 watts of total power. What I'll say in a nutshell is the name audio system is seriously impressive although I did expect a little bit better mid-range accuracy. So moving on we get onto practicality and here it's nice to see that Bentley have retained physical buttons on the steering wheel and yet again they're very similar to the ones found on an Audi vehicle but that's not necessarily a bad thing because 
because they're practical and furthermore give you the controls that you need, be it for your instrument cluster or to adjust the media volume via the included scroll wheel. Elsewhere, there's some physical buttons and climate control settings found towards the dashboard as well. And these definitely bolster the overall usability while you're driving. And in comparison to vehicles that opt for a fully digitalized or part digitalized controls, it means that the Bentley definitely stands out in comparison to its competitors. Now, moving on, we get onto storage. And here you have got the front door bins, which are large enough for a 500 milliliter bottle alongside some small valuables. While at the rear, they're a little bit limited, although they should suffice for most. At the front, you do also have a glove compartment and then the center console storage unit, whereby at the front, you do have a wireless charging pad. Of course, you don't have to use this for charging a device. You can use it to place, let's say, a wallet or small size purse. Then further down, you've got two cup holder units and a non-slip area to place, let's say, your key fob. Now, the problem I have, however, is the limited amount of storage space within the center armrest. And here it means that you can only place, let's say, some sunglasses and a wallet and or, let's say, a small size purse. But if you have a a medium sized purse or larger sized purse or more valuables that you want to store away you're gonna to have to find some other places such as placing it in the boot now of course when it comes to storage we have to talk about the boot and here it can be accessed through a button found within the cabin through your remote or by pressing the Bentley logo note this is only available when the car is not running and this is for security purposes now the boot access is fantastic the boot itself opens up pretty high and therefore gives you that kind of hatchback type of feel and makes it well not a problem for someone who's just under six foot like myself. As for the boot lip, it's quite lowered and therefore makes it easy to access larger size goods. And furthermore, you can actually lower the boot itself using the adaptive air suspension, making it all that more comfortable. Now, in terms of boot capacity, you've got 479 liters with the seats propped up. And if you were to pop down the seats, at least in the five seater model like we have on review, this extends up to 1,769 liters. Furthermore, it's got a 40-20 40 split which makes it quite convenient to take elongated goods while two passengers are sitting in the main rear seats. Now elsewhere it's nice to see that Bentley have integrated a means of compartmentalizing your rear storage and the best way I can use to explain this is via the somewhat removable little fence. Now of course you don't have to use this if you don't wish but it allows you to somewhat secure larger size goods. Now on the flip side there's no means of taking your charging cables within an underfloor compartment storage because it does not exist. And as a result, it means you're gonna to have to lug around your charging cables in the included bag, at least if you want to charge on the go. Now, I should also mention that removing or indeed installing the boot load cover is a real challenge. This is because Bentley have made it out of solid wood and therefore makes it extremely heavy to maneuver or indeed place inside of its small little brackets. And furthermore, the little metal prongs which are used to fasten up the boot load cover are quite hard to actually use. Now, while storage is very important, what about when it comes to comfort? Now, at the rear of the cabin, I've got plenty of legroom and indeed headroom. I'm just under six foot, so therefore those people who are six foot four or six foot seven won't feel too hemmed in. The only thing to point out, however, is that due to it having a transmission tunnel, which is no surprise given that it is a part electric and part petrol vehicle, it means that the, your rear middle occupant might feel a little bit more claustrophobic or have to place their feet on either side of the transmission tunnel. Now, the rear middle seat is unsurprisingly a little bit stiff, but if you do not want to use it and you have two rear occupants, you can pull it down to reveal an armrest and two cup holders. Now, this is the five-seater model, so the four-seater model has a different configuration and therefore kind of has a permanent kind of armrest area with a champagne holder, if you so wish. Now, as for the seats themselves, they're plenty soft and comfortable. I have no issues whatsoever, be it at the rear or at the front. And furthermore, the front two have got electric controls and therefore allow you to find the right sort of position, be it if you're the passenger or indeed the driver. It is a shame, however, that massage functions aren't built in as standard. And in fact, you have to purchase this as an additional option if you want them on the front seats. Now, similarly, it's also a little bit disappointing not to see the rear middle seat available with a heater option or indeed a cooling option but on the flip side you do have the rear two main seats and the front two seats with both the options available and therefore allows you to have it heated or indeed cooled 
Now at the front it can be customized through the infotainment system while at the rear you do have a built-in screen which can also be detached in other words have a little tablet and allows you to customize these settings on the fly. A small little point to make however is that I couldn't find a setting at the front of the cabin for rear occupants so let's say if you're taking a VIP then you might need to bear that in mind that they'll have to do the own controls themselves through the little built-in screen. Now on the subject of convenience all four doors have got a soft close function although it's surprising not to see a soft opening function in other words the reverse whereby if you were to just to prop open the handle it will automatically open unfortunately that's not the case and given the doors are pretty heavy and pretty chunky it's somewhat surprising nevertheless when it comes to another factor of let's say convenience and comfort is the fact that you've got a sunroof that's integrated as standard and you've got a retractable sunshade which means that you can block out the sun rays if you so wish or indeed have it fully propped open like we have in order to draw in some extra light on little bits of grayer darker days specifically in the UK and so now we get on to driving comfort and first off I have to talk about visibility at the front and at the side I've got no issues whatsoever whereby it's easy to check my blind spot or when I'm going around corners given the design of the A-pillars now the same couldn't be quite said about its rear view window whereby the limited visibility makes it a little bit hard when you're peering around your shoulder however on the flip side you do have a rear view camera and 360 degree cameras included as standard and therefore gives you a little bit more peace of mind when you're doing certain maneuvers the only takeaway over here is that the rear view camera does not have a washer and therefore means that you'll have to get your hands dirty when you go on muddier trails now while we're at a standstill I should also reference the cabin noise and here I was expecting it to be a little bit more serene now don't get me wrong the Bentley Bentayga hybrid does a good job of giving you good passive noise isolation but I was expecting it to be almost like a cut above the rest alas that's not quite the case if you want a little bit more information about this and want a little bit of a detailed breakdown do check out the dedicated audio review that I previously referenced now when it comes to maneuverability and parking the vehicle is 2.2 meters wide 5.1 meters long and has got a 3 meter long wheelbase which actually makes it pretty daunting at first but thankfully due to its lightweight steering wheel and its 12.4 meter turning circle it makes it pretty easy to do complex maneuvers or indeed let's say a basic three-point turn now this perfectly leads me on to its handling characteristics and when you're pottering around town the adaptive air suspension that comes fitted as standard in the Bentley Bentayga hybrid is absolutely phenomenal it soaks up anomalies of the road speed bumps potholes or any rougher terrain and means that well you can go around without basically jaunting around all over the place and for me that makes it well quite a comfortable driving experience now on the flip side if you take it on windy country roads you'll quickly realize that the Bentayga hybrid isn't exactly tuned for more spirited driving whereby it suffers from quite substantial amounts of body roll due to its 2600 kilogram weight and furthermore its driver's input in other words the steering wheel just feels a little bit numb and yes that even includes you lobbing it into its sport mode whereby it tightens up the steering wheel to a certain degree but even then it still won't compete with more sportier class SUVs Suffice to say, I don't really think the Bentayga Hybrid is really tuned for such driving, but I just thought to point it out nevertheless. Now, despite all of this, the vehicle does come fitted with 400mm six-piston brakes as standard and 380mm rears, and therefore gives you plenty of stopping power should you want to put on the brakes and indeed corner at speed. Now, on that subject, we get onto the subject of performance. And here the vehicle has a 3 litre V6 turbocharged engine and combined with an electric motor they output 330 kilowatts of power which equates to 443 horsepower. This gives you 700 newton meters of torque. Now despite Bentley's claim I had it tested from 0 to 60 miles an hour in a 6.18 seconds which is a little bit lower than what I would expect. Elsewhere, the vehicle has a top speed of 158 miles an hour and also in fully electric mode can go at 84 miles an hour, which definitely suffice for those of us who live in the UK. Now, should you want to attain top speed or indeed go on unrestricted roads, you'll be pleased to know that its eight-speed dual-cut transmission is buttery smooth. 
Better still, if you want to tinker around with the gears yourself, you can do so via the use of the flappy paddles. They're very responsive in terms of changing different gears. And furthermore, if you do want to go back into drive or sport mode, in other words, outside of manual mode, you can simply hold down the right side flappy paddle and it'll reinitiate those more automated modes. Now, another smooth element is the transition between petrol and electric mode. And here I must say, I'm very impressed with what Bentley have achieved. Similar to what you can find in other vehicles, there's no sort of lag between the two powertrains, and furthermore, you don't really feel the switch. Of course, you might hear the V6 engine trickling away at the front of the vehicle, but other than that, it's just buttery smooth. Now, I should mention that it's also intelligently done, whereby when you are pottering around town, it will often pick EV mode, and when you're going on a motorway or demanding more power, the petrol engine will kick in. Now, you can notice it two ways, by either glancing down at your instrument cluster and seeing that if it is on the petrol or the EV mode, and equally, you have a setting through the infotainment system which allows you to have a slight little degree of resistance between going to EV mode and then transitioning into petrol mode and therefore that little resistance will give you the indication of when you're going to be engaging the engine automatically which I think is a quite nifty inclusion from Bentley. Now this perfectly leads me onto its electric range and despite the vehicle's sheer size it only houses a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now combined with the overall weight of the vehicle it means that the manufacturer can only provide a 25 mile claim now, in real-world tests, I actually noted around 15 miles of all-electric range. And bearing in mind that was in stop-and-go within London. And as a result means that, well, you can't really drive all that long in all-electric mode and therefore truly reduce your tailpipe emissions. Here, I feel that Bentley should have included either a bigger battery pack or something that was a little bit more efficient. And therefore means that its green credentials are somewhat made redundant. Now, aside from its electric range, it should be mindful that you have a petrol element to it and indeed of course here you've got a 75 litre tank. This means that you will net roughly 390 miles in pure petrol mode only and combined with its electric portions means that you should get around 400 miles without having to stop. Now when it comes to fuel efficiency I got roughly 25 to 27 miles which is somewhat laughable for a modern vehicle but that said not exactly that surprising given that we are talking about a pre pretty chunky and petrol guzzling Bentley Bentayga hybrid. Now as for safety, the vehicle hasn't been tested by Euro NCAP but should attain a similar score to the Audi Q7, which achieved 5 out of 5 stars and this is because the two vehicles share a similar platform. Now nevertheless, when it comes to driver assistance systems, it's actually rather primitive. For a vehicle that costs over £155,000, one might have expected more standardised systems. But alas, that's not the case, you just have basic cruise control and lane positioning assistance. If you want to take things a little bit further and add the systems that you would expect to come included, you want to go for the touring spec. Here you've got adaptive cruise control, which actually works a treat, although the only thing to be mindful about here is that sometimes it will pick out road signs and therefore automatically reduce your speed of your vehicle without you wanting to. And then you've got the head-up display, safeguard plus, lane assist, traffic jam assist, and night vision, all of which are a great inclusion, but again, would have been good if they were all standard. And so this brings me on to my verdict. Can I see myself recommending the Bentley Bentayga Hybrid? Well, I do like its exterior design and subjectively its interior is very plush as well, arguably one of the best in its class. Elsewhere, boot space is definitely practical and it will stand out in comparison to the rest of the crowd. However, there's a few things that I feel that should have been improved. Take, for example, technology implementation or the in-cabin storage compartments. They could have just been a little bit better optimized. But what's more fundamental for me, however, is the overall powertrain. See, in terms of an electric point of view, it gives you around 15 miles of range, which is quite lackluster. And of course, you can recharge it automatically via its petrol engine, but that somewhat defeats the point of electric vehicles. Elsewhere, you do have a lowered power or indeed amount of torque and output in comparison to its pure petrol siblings. Here, the V6 really can't compete with the V8 or the V12, and as a result, makes it, well, the least powerful in the lineup. As a result, I would have potentially liked to see Bentley offer the V6 with a larger battery pack and therefore getting larger range, 
or for example, a smaller battery pack, such as the 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack that we have on review, but then include a V8 or a V12, which would have really bolstered the overall performance and make the Bentley Bentayga hybrid the most powerful in its lineup. But alas, that's not the case, at least not at the time of filming. Now, I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts of the vehicle in the comment section below. And of course, if you like this independent, honest, detailed review, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care, and goodbye.